the bear, made its way toward Julian and Camille's tent. The two men lie there, startled and concerned regarding the sound outside. It was around 2 a.m. The peacefulness and stillness of the river beside their tent was instantly turned into a horror in the night. They could hear the creature stepping outside the tent, the leaves and sticks crinkling and snapping as it drew closer and closer to them. Julian shuffled in his sleeping bag, not knowing how to react. Neither of them had a form of defense, and it was so dark they couldn't see a damn thing outside of a growing silhouette through the thin layer of their tent wall. The silhouette of something grisly. Julian reached into the pouch of the tent and picked up a glow stick and shined it against the wall, which must have startled the bear as it shuffled back for just a moment. But then, its interest in the human structure intensified. The bear snorted and grunted as it reached its paw out and started peeling away at the tent's sidewall. And at this moment, Julian and Camille knew that something horrific was about to occur. What's up, guys? Iceman here. So this bear incident is something out of nightmares. This is exactly the bear encounter that I probably fear the most. These two guys just weren't prepared, and this thing came in the middle of the night. And you'd think that they wouldn't attack a tent, but after doing a lot of videos on this channel and all the research I've done on bear attacks, it turns out that it's actually something that you need to be prepared for. Because you never really know when the bear might want to attempt to get at you. Even if there's a door between you and the bear, or even if there's a thin little tent wall. I've made videos on where bears go into people's cabins or into their RVs, so you just never really know. But before I get into it, I'd like to thank you guys and gals for all your support on this channel. And if you will, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit the bell so you're notified next time I post a video. And if you want to support me further, you can become a channel member or a patron. Links in the description below. And blessings to my channel members and patrons. So the victim of this attack was a 44-year-old man by the name of Julian. He was from France, but he moved to Canada in the earlier years of his life. And in Canada, he was a musician, and he was very, very talented. He loved music and the sounds of nature, and just the artistry and sound in itself. And the Brittany Symphony Orchestra, whom he worked for, actually had this to say about him. Julian was a sensitive, generous, and talented man who had a sense of adventure, wonder, and rare intelligence. So basically, this guy loved nature and the things about it. And he would travel to various places and collect natural sounds. He even went out to Antarctica in the midst of polar bears and other wild animals and recorded various natural sounds during his expedition there. But in this case, he decided to venture into the northwestern territories of Canada where the beautiful Mackenzie River stretches through. And I just went on YouTube and I watched a video on this Mackenzie River and this place is just astonishing. This is like the thing of dreams in terms of its aesthetic. Beautiful pine trees everywhere, mountainous ranges in the background, a wide, long river that apparently is like 2,000 plus miles long, salmon all over the place, wildlife, and of course, grizzly bears. But Julian and his friend Camille spent a few days venturing in the northwestern territories of Canada following the Mackenzie River. They'd camp in various places and throughout the day record the sounds of birds, nature, and the river running. But it was that fateful night in 2019 when the attack occurred. Apparently, it was Julian's dream to venture out into this area and record natural sounds, and he was talking about it for the past three years. 
and of course he invited his friend Camille on the adventure, and Camille obliged. So Camille and Julian packed their bags for this 30-day adventure, and brought their canoe with them, and just paddled down this beautiful region of Canada. The sky was so open, and the fields were just so vast which is apparently something that really intrigued Julian. He loved recording things in open areas. There are photographs of him online where he's sitting in the midst of a bunch of penguins, and he has a long microphone on a stick, just being present with them, recording all their noises and stuff like that, to include in his artistic masterpieces. But basically, it was just a few nights in where this attack occurred. And Camille said they could hear the bear outside of the tent. And it seems like it was completely a predatory attack. The men did their best to keep scraps out of the tent to seal up anything that was edible. But for whatever reason, this grizzly bear was still intrigued by their campsite. When the bear grabbed Julian, he was screaming in horror and agony, swinging his arms at it, trying to fight the bear off. But it was just so persistent, the way that it suddenly latched onto him and just drug him out of the tent. For whatever reason, it was determined to get Julian out of there. And that's exactly what it did. Camille was right there in his sleeping bag watching this whole thing take place, but it all happened so fast. Julian had the glow stick in his sleeping bag, and Camille witnessed this scene of him just getting drug away into the night, with this glow stick just fading away. The bear was said to be so massive and muscular, there was just nothing Camille could do to stop it. It looked like something out of nightmares, and then it just vanished in the night with Julian, leaving the tent partly torn up and Camille there alone to fend for himself. So basically, Camille was then able to contact authorities and he let them know of this incident. The search parties came to the scene early in the morning and they scoured the area. They found Julian's ravaged body along with his sleeping bag, but no sign of a bear. So they expanded the search site and eventually found both a black bear and a grizzly. And they killed both of those bears and later found that it was indeed a large grizzly bear that attacked and killed Julian. So unfortunately, this is how the whole scene played out. And it's really sad because Julian at 44 years old was just starting to live his life in how he wanted it. He wanted to be a successful musician and he wanted to travel the world and record sounds all throughout. And this whole thing for him was just cut so short. It makes me think back a little bit of an experience that I had when I was a child. My dad and my uncle and I went out camping in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, where of course black bears reside. And there was a moment one evening when we were walking down a trail and we could hear the cries of a young cub black bear, so it sounded anyway. And at this point, I was probably a hundred feet ahead of my dad and uncle. And all of a sudden, it made me feel extremely vulnerable being the small boy that I was and hearing this cub crying for help. I just imagined the mother bear coming to its call and finding me between them, or the three of us for that matter. So nonetheless, at the time, I was glad to get out of there when we did, because I really didn't want to have to sleep another night in that tent. But yeah, it's concerning to me how frequently people camp out in grizzly country, because it seems that you just never know what you're going to get. And I feel like I would at the least want to have an RV or something, or some sort of hardened enclosure that I could sleep in. But nonetheless, these attacks are quite rare, but again, you just never know. And especially the ones where they break into the tent. But unfortunately, this is far from the first one that I've covered on this channel, where a bear just attacked someone's tent and that was that. And in some cases, drug them out of there, alive or dead. But nonetheless, let me know what you guys think about this bear attack. What do you think could have been done differently to prevent this situation? And would you expect a bear to just break into your tent 
in the middle of the night? Is that something we should be concerned about while camping in grizzly country? Or is this just such a rarity that it's like getting struck by lightning or something? I personally haven't really crunched the numbers, but I do know that people who are susceptible to being struck by lightning are far more common than those who are camping out in grizzly bear country. But let me know your thoughts on these matters in the comments, and I will talk to you all soon with more chilling tales from the Iceman.